Hey guys, in this new Django series I'm going to build an e-commerce website with multiple vendors from scratch. So far I've just come up with the name of the project and what types of products to sell there. So a multiple vendor e-commerce website means that multiple people can sign up and create their own little store inside our e-commerce website. That means that multiple people can sell products on your platform. I'm going to begin by setting up a rough to-do list and then take you together with me on this journey. I will show you absolutely everything. This includes bug fixing, finding help on Google and similar. So yes, let's just get started with the to-do list. So I created a folder called Petnet. This is the name of the project. And then in here I want to create a to-do list. So just touch to-do.txt or you can go in your finder and create a file here. Next, I just want to open this in the editor and like to use Visual Studio Code. Great, so now I have opened it here and then I have the to empty to-do list. So now I just to-do. And the first thing I need to do now is to create a virtual environment for the Python or Django project. So create virtual env. And after that, I want to install Django and also create the empty project. So install and set up. And when this is done, just want to make sure that it runs and I can initialize the database and create a super user for the admin interface. So init database uh, super user test run. And when this is done, I can begin with the first Django app, which will be called core. And this is for the front page, the contact page and similar. So create core app for base pages. And after that, I can create a new app for the vendor or the user profile. So create app for user profiles. So then it's easier to separate the vendors from the user profiles and similar or regular customers. And when this is done, I can create app for products. So you can begin adding products in the backend using the admin interface. And then you can go to the next step, which will probably be list out newest products on the front page. And then maybe product detail view. But before we start adding products, add the category model. I don't think I need a separate app for this. So I can just indent it into this here. And then when we have the product detail view and the list, we can say category view. And after that, a simple search. And when we have got that far, we can then navigate throughout here. Maybe we can do a vendor detail page you can see all the products for a certain vendor and then after that we can maybe say add products to the cart view cart and then maybe check out I'll probably change this to do list a little bit throughout this series but at least this is a very rough view and then at the end deploy project but I also want to add more things here, like admin pages for the vendors. Uh, we need authentication somewhere. Maybe we can do that before we go to the cart. So make it possible to sign up, log in and log out. Uh, create my account page and then here. In this admin pages is where they can see all of their per, uh, sales at new products and similar. So this is now a very rough to do list for this project. And before I begin here, I just want to add here implement payment gateway. So this will either be Stripe or PayPal, or maybe you can even do both of them. 
Great, so now that we have this, we can begin with the first task, which is create a virtual environment. And a virtual environment is an isolated environment on your computer, which makes it easier to install Python packages like Django just for this project. It makes it easier to maintain and also to deploy. So if I now go to the command line, I can create the virtual environment by saying Python dash V, no, M, then and then the name, which is just petnet env. Then, oops. Okay, it's not correct. Okay, sorry, I forgot to add Python 3. So it's Python 3 dash m, then, and then the name, which is now petnet env. Great, so now this should be created there. And this includes a few files. I'm not going to go through them, but for example, in this bin folder, there's a script for activating the environment. And to do that, we say source uh, petnet env bin activate. Then you can see here that this was uh, appended in front of the folder name. So now I know that this is activated. And if I want to deactivate it, I can just deactivate. Like that. So let me activate it again and install Django. So pip install Django. This will install the newest stable version of Django, which currently is Django 4.1. Um, I think everything above 3.2 or maybe even 3 will work, but at least this is the version I'm going to be using in this project. So now that it is installed, you can also see that we got some dependency for SQLite and similar. So then I can go to the to-do list and set this task to done. Next then is to install and set up. So I have already installed the, uh, Django, but we can set up the project by saying Django-admin start project petnet. And then we can go into it. And if you see here now, the hand then I have this manage.py and I also have the petnet. Nice. So if I then go here again, I can set this task to done. Great. So then I can begin by initializing the database, creating a super user and perform a test run to see that it's running. And to initialize the database, I just say python manage.py migrate. I don't have to run the make migration now because I haven't done any changes to the database models. Now this just run the default. And if I run ls now, you can see that I got a new SQL at database here. I will convert this to a PostgreSQL later when we deploy the project. So then we can create a super user, Python, mention py, create super user so that I can log into the admin interface, admin at patnet.com, and then a password. Okay, so now this was created successfully, and then I can run this project, Python, measured by run server. So if I now just copy this and open up Chrome, then you can see here that the installation worked successfully and everything is working. Nice. You can also try to log into the admin interface, the user I just created. And everything here is also working. Here you can see my user and groups if I wanted to use that. Great. So then I can go back here again and save. Next then is to create the core app for the base pages. So I can just stop the web server, say Python, py, start app core. Then I run the server again. I'm not going to use any database models for this app, so I don't have to worry about that now. But if I open up the project folder, you can see now that I got a new core app here. So I need to tell Django that this exists. So if I open up settings.py and find installed apps, then I can append it to the list here and save. So then I can just close this for now. And then inside the core, I want to create a new view for the front page. 
So I'm going to use function best views because that is what I like the best. You can use class best views if you want that, but I like function best views best. So def front page request. I can just return a render, which is the function imported up here. Pass in the request parameter and say core slash front page dot html. I'm not going to pass in anything here yet, but now that this is done, I can import this view to the main URLs file. So open up petnet urls.py. Just want to remove this comment. And then I can import the front page here. So from core.views import front page. Run path. This can be empty because I don't want to have any uh, URLs or path for going there. And just pass in the front page view, set the name to front page, so it's easy to reference this other places in the project. If I now try to refresh, I will get an error. Template does not exist because we haven't created that yet. But at least it found out that I wanted to use this, which means that this view was rendered. So inside the core folder, I want to create a new folder called templates, because Django automatically looks for a folder called templates inside all of the apps. And then in there, you can just say core, so it's easy to separate this templates folder from other apps. And then in here, I want to create a new front page.html. Front page. So if I save now, refresh, the error isn't gone, but I think that if I just stop and start the web server again, it's fixed. Yes, nice. So I know that I want to use Tailwind for styling this project. So just want to go to Tailwind CDN. That's what I want to use. I'm going to install Tailwind later, but for now we can just use the CDN. This is not the best choice for production, but just for development, it's more than okay. So let me just copy this. And then go back to Visual Studio Code, paste it, save, and refresh. Yes, so now you see that this changed. If I open up the inspector, there are no errors there, just saying that it should not be used in production. Nice. So at least it's working. Um, I don't want to have all of this on all of my templates. So I want to create a base template that for example, the front page, the contact page, and similar can just extend. Okay, sorry about the background noise. But if I now just copy this code again and create a new file in here called base.html and paste it here instead. And I just want to fix the indentation and remove this. Here is a base template, just for testing now. And then to extend this and use all of this inside the front page, you can just remove and say extends core slash base.html. And then this core name here refers to the folder inside the templates folder. So if I now go back, refresh, you'll see base template. But if I want to write something here now and save refresh, it's not going there. And that's because there isn't a slot or a block for this in the template. And to add that, I can go back to base.html and say block content, because this is where I want the main content of the page to be, and block, and close it like that. And then I can copy these two, just paste it here. And then I can say from page. Refresh. So now all of the content I put in here will be rendered inside here when we go to a page. Nice. I also want the title tag. So I want to have this between the meta and the script. So block title and block. And then I want to have the jank no the HTML title tag wrapped around. That net, one word. So now content I put in here inside the front end, I can show you how this looks. So just say title, welcome. 
and the block and save. So if I now go back and refresh, you can see that we have welcome here, which comes from the front page, and then the rest comes from the base.html file. Okay, so now that we have covered this, I want to stay, take a step further and just uh, include a very basic menu on top above the content here. So then I can say nav, then I need to add some classes from Tailwind. Uh, I want this to be have a max width, so uh, max w width for XL. And then we can set the background PG teal 600 for example. And then I have a div here, class for the logo. And then I can just say H, sorry, A, AGRF can go to the front page, pet net, and save. So you just want to see if this is working now. Yes, you can see here that I got the green teal color, and the link to the front page is put there. Nice. And if I just close this now, you will see that this doesn't fill out the whole screen, but I want this to uh, be centered on the screen. So MX dash auto. Nice. And we can have some padding inside there as well. PY4. So this is padding above and below. And PX6. Yes, so now I got spacing there and also on this side. I want the color of the link to be white. So class text white. Nice. And before. I don't want to do so much more here yet, but I can add uh, one more element on this side, which should go to the uh, about page. Um, so div class menu, a href can just go to the front page for now because I haven't created it. Set the class to be text white on this as well. So about. And we can increase the text size for this a little bit. So text to XL. Yes. But now you see that this is on one line and this is on one line. Now that's because uh, the div, these two divs, always fills out the whole width of the element. So we need to set up a flex box up here. Flex. Like that. So now it, at least it's on the same line but we need to have space between these two elements and I also want them to be aligned so we can begin with uh, items center I think yes so now there are same space above and below and then to uh, put a space between them we can say justify between and save so now it was moved over there nice so you can see now that this just fills out here, but this element goes out to the left side and the right side of the screen. So I can copy this class and create a section around here. Div class like that, like a little wrapper. Save, refresh. Did not work. Okay, I forgot to add the MX Auto here as well to center it on the XL line. Nice. And then if I just add the same type of spacing in here, I should be good for now. Nice. So then I can create a simple about page. So let's begin with the view. Def about request return render request. And then the template should be core slash about.html. So now you can create that template about.html and I want this to extend the base template as well so extends core slash base.html I want to set the title here block title about and block and then the block for the content block content and block and then in here I can say h1 about 
So the next step then will be to import this to the URLs.py. So about path about about name is also about. So now I should be able to go directly to about. Oops. Okay, there is something wrong in the terminal. Okay, I added a double tick there. So let me go back to the views.py, fix it, save. Okay, error is gone. So if I refresh now, you will see that I'm on the about page. If I click here, I will be sent to the front page. But then I can fix the element up in the menu. So instead of going there, I can, for example, say about if I wanted to hard code it. But it's better to make this dynamic and use a block from Django called URL. Then I just pass in about. And then this URL block or function will go into the URLs.py and find the name about and give me this path. So if I now refresh, I should be able to click about and be sent to the about page. Nice. So now I can use this to navigate between these pages. So that means that I now can go to the to-do list and set the first task here to done. Sorry, not first, but this task to done. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to all of my patrons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link in the description below. Okay, before I start adding products and similar, I want to create an app for the user profile so it's easy to connect products to, the, uh, to a user profile. I'm actually going to connect the products to a user and not the user profile, but it's nice to just have this. So if I now go here, create a new uh, app, Python, manage it by start app, user profile, hit enter. So I'm sorry if I go too fast here, you can just ask questions down in the comments below if you have any and I will try to answer as good as I can. So then I can go back here and open up the settings.py. Oops. Like that. So now we need to add the user profile here as well. So now Django knows that this exists and we're going to use it. So I can close this. And then we can create a very simple um, database model for the user profile. User profile, oops, slash models.py. And then here is a class user profile. Pass in models.model because we're going to use this from Django. And then the only field I want right now is a reference to the user which comes from Django. So user equals models dot one to one field because a user can only have one user profile and a user profile can only have one user. So I need to pass in user there. Say a related name is user profile and on delete models.cascade so if we delete a user we also want to delete the user profile as you can see here i get a little error because the user isn't defined so we need to import this from django from django.contrib.auth.models import user and then the error is gone so now we can uh, tell the database to create this table by saying python manage.py make migrations and python manage.py migrate. So now you can see here that we want to create a new user profile database model. Nice. So then I want to do a little change here and that is to just add a string representation of this class def str self return self dot user so then we get the username there instead of just an object okay so now that that is done we can just run the server again and then we want to make sure that admin user has a user profile just so we don't get any errors later we will fix the automation of this soon but at least if I now go into the user profile admin of Pi, we want to register this model here. So from dot models import user profile. 
admin.site of the register user profile and save. So if I now refresh, you see that this appeared here. So we can create a new user profile for the admin user and hit save. Okay, okay, so now you can see that it actually didn't return a string but the user object. So then I can go here, say dot username and save. So if I try to refresh now, I'll probably get a new error. No, it was working. Okay, nice. So now the user profile belongs to this user. Okay, so then we have a simple connection between these two and we have a user profile for the admin user. So now I can set this to done. And we can continue to the next step, which is to create a new app for the products where we also want to have database models and similar. So we need to stop this again. So Python mentioned by start app uh, product or maybe it's best to just call this store since we want uh, multiple types of models here for example the, the product and then the category and similar. So let's call this store. And then we need to tell Django about this. So open up settings oops settings.py and append the store here and save. So then we can open up that model find it store models.py yes and here is also a place I want to have a reference to the user and not necessarily the user profile so from django.contrib.auth.models import user then we say class category because I want to separate that as model for the categories models.model and then this should have a title models.char field you can set the max length to 50 because we don't usually want very long category names and I want the slug, uh, which is a URL representation of the title field, models.slug field, max length also 50, just like the title. And then I can save this, update the database by running the make migrations. You can see that this was working. We want to create a new model called category and then run the actual migration script that was created. Okay, so far so good. Let's go back and go to the admin. So we can register it there from dot models import category and admin dot site dot register category. So if I now Go here, I will get an error because this isn't running, so I can do that. Yes, so then we have the categories there. As you can see, this is misspelled. I will fix it very soon, but we can create a couple of categories. So food, and then the slug. And then I can save and create one more, which can be toys, and save. Okay, so now we have two small problems here. One is the misspelling there, and two, it's just a category object two instead of toys or food. So we can fix that in the database model. We can begin with the spelling. So class meta, which is the configuration for this database model. Verbose name, category, and Verbose name, oops, plural, which is categories. Actually, we don't need this since this is already correct. But if I save now, refresh, we see that this now is a category S, which is the correct way to spell it. And then we can fix this one by saying def str self return self.title, which is the one we want to represent here. Now it's a toys and food, which is much easier to understand.
Okay, so then we can continue to the next database model, which is the product. So class product class in models dot model, and here we want a reference to the category. So category equals models dot foreign key category, and then we want to set a related name so it's easier to get all of the products for a specific category. So related name. Uh, sorry, products and on delete models.cascade. So if you delete a category, you also delete all of the products. Here I also want a reference to the vendor or the user who has created this. So user equals models dot foreign key user. And then since we have the user object here, it's also easy to get the user profile from this field, so we don't need both. And then we can just copy the rest of this, paste it like that. So now we can just say user.products.all to get all of the products for a specific user. And then the title field and the slug field can just be copied there. And we also want the description field. So description model dot text field because this should be much longer usually at least so this blank is true in case a user doesn't want to have a description for a product. And another field we want here is the price. So price equals models dot integer field. I want the price to be specified in cents, for example 100 cent is one dollar because that's how it's usually sent into the payment gateways like Stripe. So now we have most of the describing field of a product but we can also add created at so we know when this product was created. Uh, models dot date time field auto now add equals true so when this is added to the database Django automatically append this for us so you don't have to think about it anymore maybe you also want to know if a product has been updated so now we say updated at models dot date time field auto now equals true so every time this is saved this is updated so then we can copy the string representation of this and save. So now we have most of the basic things we need about the product. We're also going to add status and much other things later like images, but we don't need that right now. So then I can stop this and say make migrations. So you can see here now we added meta options to the category and we also want to create a new model called product. Python by migrate. So now we have this database model as well in the database. So we can run this now. And then we just need to register this here. Product admin site register product and save. So if I now refresh here, you'll see that products appeared here. So we can create one. The user creating this is admin in the category toys, chewing toy, chewing toy. I will fix automation for this later so the user doesn't have to fill this out. This is the description for the first product which is a chewing toy. The price for this should be $19, so $19 and cents, so 1900 cents and save. So since we added the string representation function, you also see the title here. Nice. So now I think I can go to the to-do list and set these tasks to done. Nice. So we have actually come far away on this project already, but we're going to do this task also right now. And then the next step is to list out the newest products on the front page. So 
So let me just close all of these for now. And to do that, we need to open up uh, the front page view, which is in the patnet core views.py. So here. And to get all of the products, you need to include or import the database model from store.models import product. And then we want to get, for example, four products to show on the front page, or six, so we can have three and three. So products equals product.objects.all. We just want to get all of them. And to get only six, we use a list split here. So zero colon six. So we get the first six products here. And then to make this available in the template, we need to append it here. So context like that. So now this variable should be able to be used in the template. So if I open up front page.html, we can use them here. And to loop through them, we can say for product in product. And we can show the title, product.title. And for to stop it or to end this for block. So if I now go to the front page and refresh, you will see the chewing toy title. Nice. Okay, so to list out three and three products, we need to have a div around this. Just like we did up in the menu, you need a flex box. Div class flex. I will probably need more than this, but we can begin with this. And then here we said div class. Can add a product just so we know that it's easy to access using regular CSS or similar if we wanted to do that. Now we need to set the width so w colon one slash three to get one third of the width. And then we can set the background PG gray 200, which is a very light gray color. So then I can save this, go back and refresh. Now we'll see that it's listed out here. Then I want one here, I want there, 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 and there. So I can add a few more here. Squeaky toy. Save and add another. So I suppose to click on at least food one key D lamp. Just add some dummy data here. Okay, so now I should have three here, and then I want the next to come on the next line. So add one more five kg lamp. And then the price and save. So as you can see now, even though I specified this to be one third, it doesn't go on the next line. And that is because this isn't wrapping. So I need to say flex wrap and then it jumps down there. I also want some space between this. So here I think I can just say space x2. No, then the flex isn't working. So to fix this, there are a couple of ways to do that, but we can begin by just saying P2 and get space in there and then div plus, for example. So now we have space between this. I also want space inside the product. So I can add it here, P4, refresh. Nice. So now we list out the products here, but it doesn't look very good. So we can make this a little bit bigger. Class text XL. And I want the background to be even brighter like that. And then below this, I want to have the price. So P product dot price. You can see now that we get this in cents, which isn't very good. And if I add a dollar sign there, we 
have the dollar and the 1900 but we can create a model function so get display price for example we can call the function that then we just open up store slash models.py now we can create it here def self and then return self dot price divided by 100 colon like that so if i now refresh it's uh, displayed here as in dollars so 90 dollar 10200 this should be a little bit smaller and a more grayish color class text sm text gray 600 refresh okay maybe even xs to be even smaller yes perfect so now that we have made it possible to show all of the products here just want to fix the ordering because you can see this was the newest product i added and i want that to be up here we can set the default order for this model here by adding the class meta ordering and add the tuple here and just a minus created at remember to add a comma here since this is a tuple let's go back and refresh and now the newest product is up in the left corner nice so that means that I can go to the to-do list and set this task to done. So I will fix the design later in the series because it has to look much better than this, but it's not very important right now. So now I can create the product detail view. And this should not be in this views.py. I want this to be in the views.py in the store. So store views.py. Then I can begin by importing the database model from dot models import product and you can see here that I can say dot models because I'm in the same folder. So you can use it by is in the same folder as this file here. And then def product detail pass in the request parameter. Then just a return render pass in the request parameter and specify which template store product detail dot html and save okay, now we need to create a new folder templates and then store dot html and now you can see the positive thing of having a folder with the same name as the app inside the templates folder so it's easy to separate them from each other oops sorry this was just supposed to be store and then inside there create a new file product detail.html i also want this to extend the base template so extends core slash base.html you can set the title block title product blah 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 and the block content and then close this and block and save and then to prevent that this uh, sorry not here the urls file here becomes too long and messy i want to create a separate urls file for the store app so here create a new file urls.py and we need to import from django this function here from django.urls import path now we can create a new urls pattern url patterns oops sorry misspelling url patterns like that and create a new list okay and then we can uh, import the view here so from dot import views then i can just import the whole file and here you can say path product slash and then views dot product detail name product detail and save so django doesn't know that we are going to use this file so we need to import and include it in this urls main file so here a 
Uh, we can add this at the bottom part. It can just be empty. And then we say include product.urls. So now this is a reference to the file here. Sorry, store.urls, of course. So you can see that I get an error here, which means that I need to import this, and this is in the same file as the path function. So, sorry, I want to have this at the top there. So, when this is empty, it first tries to go to the front page, and yes, it exists. It should actually... Sorry, it should be on the top. So first, when it's empty, it tries to go in here and find the URLs here that matches. So if the URL isn't product, then, then it will just continue and go down to the product. But if I now go to slash product, then you will see that I see the product page. And that is because we first go in here and it matches this one. If I've gone to something else, it will not find it because it's not in here and it's not in there. So we don't want to hard code this, we want the slug to be here. So here we need to add a tag, slug, slug. So this is the type of uh, string we are uh, expecting to find up there. And this slug is going to be passed in here, so slug. Here I can say print slug. So we can just see that this is working now. So the name that we put in here is the same as there. So if I then try to go to one of these products here, for example, the squeaky toy, like that. So now you can see that we are visiting the squeaky toy. And if I go to the command line, you can see that we are printing out the slug there. So then the next step now is to get this product from the database based on this slug. So to do that is a product equals product dot object dot get where slug equals slug. And then we want to make this available in the template. We need to create a new context list here. Product product and save. So if I then just save this now, go into product detail, and we can show the title here. So h1 product dot title. Save, refresh, and I will see the squeaky toy here. Okay, but we also want to show the title up here. We want to show the price and the description and similar. So let's go back to the template. Just copy this and paste it up here. So if I now go back, you will see that we see the title of the product here. Nice. Um, you can add a class here to make the text a little bit bigger. Text to Excel. Like that. And then below there, we want to show the price. So P, class, text XS, text gray 500, product.get display. Price. As you can see, we can use it here as well. So when we refresh, we see that. Just need to set the dollar sign front, like that. And then below here, we can show the product description. So P. Product dot description. So this field isn't mandatory. We want to check here if this field is filled out by saying if product.description because we won't, don't want to have an empty paragraph element in there and if and save so it's still showing nice and you can add a class here to get some space up to the price so margin top empty four great so now we have a very simple detail page for the product as well that means that we have covered a lot already in this project. I want to fix one thing in the views.py. Instead of doing this, which will give us an error if we go to a product that doesn't exist, see here that we get a product doesn't match. 
but we want to have a simple 404 page so we can use a, a shortcut from Django called get object or 404 so just remove this now we use it here first you need to pass in the database model we want to use which is product and then which field to filter on so slug equals slug so it's very similar it's just that now we will get a 404 error instead of a server error nice we'll come back to creating a very basic 404 page later you see here we only see this page uh, because the debug is set to true if this was set to false we will see a real 404 page okay so now this should be working but i want to have a button or make it possible to click this to view the product so if i go to the front page front page.html you can actually wrap everything here in a link so a href then close it below and then the url here is url and product underscore detail but now i will get an error if i try to refresh because this isn't found because there isn't any arguments so to provide the slug you can just say space and then product dot slug and save so if i refresh now these should now all be links to the product nice so now we have a very simple list of products we can visit the products and similar so that means that i can go here and set this to done okay i can do one more task today which is the category view i want to list out all of the categories here up in the menu so we can click them to view products belonging to that category and to do that we need to create something called a template tag because to loop through them i can't just add them up in the template and i don't want to add it to the page every time so um inside the uh, to which folder yes the store i want to have this here because this is connected to the category database model so in the store here we create a new folder template tags and then in there we need to create an empty file in netpy just so django knows that it should treat this folder as a package and then there we can say menu.py and this is something i actually have to google so django custom template tag so how to create custom template tags and filters yes you can see here i've done this created a folder called template tags created this file and then pulled extras but i called my menu.py and to load this i need to add this to the template so i can open up base.html and add it above the doc type this needs to be renamed to menu and just stop and start the server okay everything looks okay refresh and then menu isn't a registered tag library must be one of these okay it hasn't been registered yet because we only have an uh, empty file so let's continue can import these two um, and then paste them there actually i think i said something wrong because this isn't a typical um, template tag i want to create something called an inclusion tag because i want to uh, load as you can see here i want to do this and then i want to pass in the menu to create an, an html file so okay but i have done uh, correct so far anyways but then the inclusion tags then i can say something like this 
sorry, go back to Visual Studio Code, at register inclusion tag, menu, but you can say core slash menu.html. And then below here, def menu. Does this need anything? No. So it can just be empty. And then I want to return something here. So I want to return the data. This can just be empty for now. But then inside the core folder, I can create a new file called menu.html, the menu, and save. And then to show this now in the base template, I can go here next to the about and say menu and save. So there are no errors. So let me try to refresh. And now you can see the menu. Nice. So then I want to get all of the categories here and return them into this context. So we need to import the database model for the category from store.models import category categories equals category.objects.all and we can append it to the list here like that. So this still hasn't done anything because I need to list them out here. So if I just go to base.html, make a copy of this link here and paste it here. And then I say for category in categories. And then as I close and for to close this for loop. So if I refresh now, it just say about about because we have two categories. We can show the titles there instead. Category dot title. Save and refresh. And I said food, toys, and then about. Nice. I want some more space between these. So here I want to create a new flex box. Flex space x four. Nice. Okay, we haven't created this page yet. We can actually move this link into the menu just to clean this up a little bit more. So it's still there. Great. Um, this about page isn't the page for the categories. So we can create a category page now in the core views. So open up this. And then I want to have this on the top, def category detail request slug. We want the slug here as well. And then we can just say return render request store slash category detail HTML and save. And then I want to make it possible to go to that page. So Make a copy of this, paste it, say category detail, category detail. So you can see these two are now similar and this will crash and I will show you how to fix it very soon. Just want to go here now, say category detail and pass in the category dot slug. So the menu should be working now. So if you see down in the left corner, you see slash food and slash toys. If I click this, I will get the template that does not exist. Okay, but if I try to go to one of these, it will actually say that the, the template does not exist yet. Sorry, I can fix that first. Category detail.html. And I just want to make a copy of all of this. Paste it. The cat and block. Just to remove this so this isn't the error. Save, refresh. So now it tries to find this category but that doesn't exist yet. So you can say category equals get object 404. Here we want to use the category model. So we need to import it here as well. Slug equals slug. 
and then we want to make this available in the template category category and save so now we will get a new error and that says no category matches isn't existing but why does it say category and not the product since these two are similar so what I want to do here now is to add the category slug to the product as well so here you can see slug which is what we are expecting and then category slug and save so this doesn't change anything but here in the product detail view we want to add one more parameter category slug and save so if I refresh now, nothing changes yet, but if I try to go to the front page, this will crash because we haven't specified the category slug for the products. So if I open up front page again, then we need to append it here, product.category.slug. So now we pass in two parameters there. So if I refresh now, you will see that the URL for the product is now food slash this one. Nice. If I go here now, it will send me to this page, but we haven't used the category there yet. But I can say category title, copy, paste, and save, refresh, and now it says food and food. So now we are on a category page. And if I try to go to a category that doesn't exist, it says this. And if I go to food, slash a product that doesn't exist, it says product doesn't exist. Nice. So then I want to list out all of the products for this category here. To make them available, products equals category dot products dot all. And I can say dot products because in the database model we added this related name down there. And then we need to add this to the context like that. So then I want to list them out here just like we did on the front page. So I can copy this div and just paste it there. So if I now go back and refresh on the food page, you'll see that we have the lamp. If I go to toys, you'll see the toys. I can click on one of these. Nice. So now I actually have a very simple category page for the project as well. So then I can go to the to-do list and set this to done. Then the next step, which I will come back to in the next part of the series, will be to create a simple search and then I will continue with these other things. I will also add much more to do here because I want to implement a better design, uh, more details on the projects, uh, products and similar. If you have any questions about this project, feel free to leave a comment below and answer as soon as I can. See you in the next video.